Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a somewhat intriguing paper that suggests strange stars actually exist. And here it's actually kind of difficult for me to even help you visualize this. We're not really talking about stars that are just weird or strange. We're talking about stars or objects made out of what's known as strange matter, which by itself is made out of what's known as strange quarks, essentially matter that does not exist here on planet Earth or I guess technically it could exist for like a microsecond in some kind of a particle accelerator, but theoretically has always been suggested to be a possible type of matter that could exist inside, for example, neutron stars, or might have actually existed in the beginning of the universe, with hypothetical objects known as strange stars still in existence today. But in this case, we're going to be discussing this particular study that's actually a follow-up or an additional observation from another previous study, the one you can find in the description below, that seems to have confirmed these initial observations. Basically confirming that the observations from the supernova remnant located somewhere right here seem to indicate that there is an unusual object in the center whose current physical properties are extremely difficult to explain using modern physics, implying that this unusual object has a very high chance right now to actually be the first ever confirmation for an existence of very exotic objects. In this case, the objects were referred to as strange stars. But I guess let's start with baby steps. So here's how all of this kind of started. It basically all began with the discovery of a new supernova remnant. And as you might already know, most supernova usually result in one of two things. Either some kind of a black hole remnant, what we usually refer to as a stellar mass black hole, or potentially a neutron star. And it's really the mass of that initial star that went supernova that determines what's going to be produced. More massive stars result in black holes, less massive stars result in neutron stars. Although actually extremely massive stars can sometimes leave nothing behind. But that's something that only happens to some of the most massive stars we've discovered so far, and as a matter of fact has never really been seen physically either. Nevertheless, remnants, including neutron stars and black holes from various supernova, have been seen many times. But when looking at this particular supernova remnant that was discovered a few years back, the scientists using various telescopes and using multi-frequency observation discovered something unusual on the inside. Okay, it wasn't really unusual at first. It became unusual with further analysis. It seemed to be the lightest neutron star ever discovered, or the least massive neutron star ever discovered. But in this case, way, way below even theoretical mass. And this would have been totally fine and not really a problem if this was a white dwarf, because white dwarfs typically have this mass of about 0.8 solar masses, but this would create a new problem. A supernova cannot possibly produce a white dwarf unless it's a type 1 supernova, where a white dwarf explodes but does not explode completely. But this was not the case. All of these emissions indicated a type 2 supernova, and the emissions from within, specifically the X-rays, indicated that this was not a white dwarf, but very likely a neutron star after all. But the thing is, this wasn't really a problem until recent observations from the Gaia telescope. Because at first the scientists believed that this was a regular neutron star, but turns out that their distance calculations were incorrect. When Gaia telescope recalculated the exact distance to this object using some of the most advanced astrometry technique that we currently have, the distance was determined to be approximately 8,150 light years away from us, not 10,000 light years as previously assumed, which implied that the central object was not as massive as initially thought, and really implied that this was the lightest neutron star ever found. Previous measurements of its mass were actually much higher. But the thing is, the current models for the star collapse do not allow for such low mass neutron star. With so little mass, it really can only be some kind of a white dwarf, at least according to previous theories. As a matter of fact, the lightest neutron star that's accepted by everyone to date is a neutron star located in the pulsar binary. In this case, the lightest object is about 1.17 solar masses, and even here that lower mass is a bit of a problem. But at 77% of the solar mass, it really makes no sense whatsoever. So what exactly is this object then? And at the moment there seems to be only one potential explanation that kind of makes sense. It's really in regards to how matter changes when it finds itself in extreme conditions of high pressure and very high temperature. Now we're all familiar with ordinary matter, the stuff that we have on Earth. That's the stuff made out of atoms, sometimes also referred to as atomic matter. But as you go deeper you find nuclear matter. It's sort of like a liquid composed of neutrons and protons that by themselves are made out of even smaller stuff, the stuff we refer to as quarks. And everything around us that we're familiar with is made out of up quark and down quark. But there are obviously other quarks, 
Specifically, there are strange quark and charm quark, sometimes also referred to as the second generation quarks. And the combination of strange quarks with, for example, up and down quarks starts to produce other subatomic particles, which have been used to explain a lot of other phenomena in various particle physics, with a lot of these calculations and explanations generally being in the domain of condensed matter physics or quantum chromodynamics. And so some of the theories in this field propose the existence of what's known as strange matter, basically matter that's composed of strange quarks, remaining in a stable state and not dissolving into anything else, unlike in regular conditions on planet Earth. And in this case, a lot of these theories have actually proposed that this type of matter can definitely exist inside neutron stars, in extremely dense, very, very hot conditions, where basically matter dissociates into quarks, creates what's known as quark matter, and some of this quark matter then starts to convert into specifically strange quark matter, eventually creating this relatively permanent matter that doesn't actually dissociate into anything else. Another way of seeing this is by imagining a neutron star as a kind of an ocean of neutrons, with all of the quarks in this neutron star confined into individual neutrons. But at some point, in just the right conditions, this confinement disappears and creates free-floating quarks. This is what we refer to as a quark star. But as a lot of these up and down quarks start to convert into strange quarks, potentially creating a more stable structure, they then turn into this hypothetical strange star. And what's really intriguing about this proposition is that it suggests that this particular object might actually be a permanent structure. This refers to an idea known as strange matter hypothesis. And in this case, the hypothesis suggests that pretty much everything around us, all other matter, is not permanent. It decays over time and becomes something else. Or basically, a lot of matter is matter-stable. Given enough time, even nuclei and protons and neutrons around us are going to turn into something else, eventually maybe even becoming just energy itself but not strange matter. Droplets of strange matter seem to be permanent and do not disappear. These droplets are sometimes referred to as strangelets. And in the last few years, the scientists identified at least eight potential candidates to be these unusual strange quark stars. And the most exciting candidate we've discussed just over a year ago with the video in the description. But the recent additional observations of this unusual object once again confirm that something here does not add up. It does not seem to be a regular neutron star, and so by double-checking the mass, the radius, and the surface temperature, and comparing this with equations that involve some kind of a strange matter, these models seem to actually align with the observations. Hess J1731-347 might be a strange star after all. Although in this case, it would still have some neutron matter on the surface, so it still possesses certain properties from a neutron star and still creates certain effects. But if this is the case, it's still not clear how exactly this object was produced. There is really no theory or no explanation for how a supernova can result in the production of this unusual object and what processes led to the production of a strange star and not just a neutron star. One proposition is that for some reason there might have been even more energy in the collapse that resulted in the removal of the mass, leaving a huge amount of quarks behind. But some other models even propose that maybe this is actually something that all neutron stars possess but in this case, the neutron star might have just lost its outer shell, leaving behind nothing but the quark star or the strange star. Whatever it is, still really exciting and will probably result in even more observations in the future. Although in this case, if this is actually a strange star and if it's real, it potentially solves another really important mystery somewhere out there in the universe. The mystery of fast radio bursts. Powerful radio signals detected from everywhere in the universe, pretty much several times per day, whose existence have been previously explained as a potential collapse of the crust on top of the strange stars. So if that tiny, tiny crust of neutron matter collapses on the surface of a strange star, it can actually result in what the scientists describe as a fast radio burst. And because we've been seeing so many around us, and because many of them still do not have a very good explanation that explains all of them all at once, some theories propose that maybe this is a strange star phenomenon after all. But unfortunately, until future observations and future discoveries, and especially analysis from other candidates that have been discovered before, we're not really going to know much more. Until then, it's just going to be a mystery that needs to be solved. Because this is still over 8,000 light years away from us, it's really difficult to actually see what's happening here. All of the current analysis does suggest that something unusual is going on. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Subscribe, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.